Hello, this is Mr. White, and this video is simply called Another Right Triangle Problem, for lack of a better title. We are entering the last section of uh, Chapter 4 here, and we're finishing off with some various applications of trigonometry. And in this uh, example we're doing today, we're going to temporarily put aside the uh, unit circle and the xy plane. We're going to go back to just triangles lying on a, on a plane. So before we get into that example, into our example for today, uh, we first need to recall how to solve systems of simultaneous equations, such as the one you see on the board. And um, I'm hoping this will come back to you pretty quickly. There are several ways you could go about solving these systems of equations, in this case, two uh, equations with two unknowns. Uh, there's a process called elimination. You may remember that's the one where you multiply each equation by some constant and then add them up. So for example, I could multiply this times 4 and multiply this equation times 5. That would turn this 5 into a positive 20 and this negative 4 into a negative 20. You could add up the equations and uh, cancel them out. That's called elimination. But that's not the one I'm really trying to, trying to bring back to mind for you here. Uh, we can also graph those, I'll point out, now that you know um, uh, how to use your graphing calculator pretty proficiently. You could uh, think of the h and d as an x and the y, and then graph those two and see where they intersect. But the, the, the method that I'm going to suggest we use here is substitution, and that's probably the one, in my experience, that students find uh, most comfortable. That's the one where you look at one of those equations and you say, I'm going to solve for one of the variables. And you typically just choose the one that's where it's easiest to solve for a variable. So this one, this equation, pretty easy to solve for h. And I expect you may be anticipating what I'm going to do next. We're going to take that h value and we're going to substitute it into the other equation. So when we take that equation and write it as 3h, instead of the h, we'll put the 4d plus 3. And then we'll finish off the equation plus 5d equals 43. So in my experience, uh, this typically comes back pretty quickly for students, so I'm not going to draw this out too long. I'm just going to say 3 times 4d is 12d, plus 5d, 17d. Um, I have to remember to, uh, to distribute this 3 to this other 3, so that gives me a 9. But um, I'll go ahead and write it on this side. Subtract the 9 over, 17d equals 34. And in this case, it works out to be a nice, clean integer. And of course, if I want to um, get the other variable, or as I should get the other variable, I'll use come back to this equation. And that tells me h equals 4 times our newly solved d value plus 3. So h equals 11. Quick review of something that, uh, that I expect you are pretty good at. But if you have any trouble with it, of course, come on by and, uh, during office hours. But we're going to use that technique, that substitution technique, for our example. So here is the Great Pyramid of Giza. It is the oldest and largest of the three pyramids in the Giza necropolis bordering what is now El Giza, Egypt. And it is also the oldest of the seven wonders of the ancient world, and it's the only one that remains largely intact. And you can look at that picture and um, see the people in it and get a sense of how tremendously huge this, this pyramid is. And of course, our task today is going to be to calculate how tall is that pyramid. And if you think back to our, um, our hypsometer activity that we did outside, where we used uh, those, those hypsometers, which were basically glorified um, protractors, and um, some measuring tape, and we were measuring the heights of various objects. But we wouldn't be able to do that exactly the same way with this pyramid. Uh, if, if you notice that all the objects that we measured back during that activity, we were able to get right up next to the base of that object, right where that object met the ground. But you can't really do that with this pyramid. There's a, just an immense amount of, uh, of stone there that would keep us from getting right underneath the tip of that pyramid. So we're going to have to come up with a different technique. And this is the basis of our uh, one example for this video. And I simply call it the ugliest right triangle trig problem that you'll see in pre-calculus. And here's the scenario. At some point on the flat desert plain of Giza, you view the top of that great pyramid with a 23.0 degree angle of elevation. And then you step 509.2 feet back, 
further away from the pyramid and you find that your angle of elevation is now 16 degrees, 16.0 degrees to be more precise. And we want to use that information to figure out how high is the top of the pyramid above our current elevation. Um, we're going to assume for the sake of this problem that our elevation does not change. Um, so again, I underscore this flat desert plain. Um, and, and we're also going to assume that our eyeballs are five feet above ground. I will mention that um, in the problems that you may see in the book or on my test, we may just choose to ignore the eyeball height. If we're measuring something that's hundreds or thousands of feet high, we will consider our eyeball height negligible in some cases. But I threw it in there this time. So first thing we've got to do is uh, draw a picture of what's going on here. Without a clear picture, we're really not going to get very far. So here's our flat plane. <clears throat> There's our pyramid. And we are standing somewhere. We're not really told where we're standing with respect to the pyramid. We're just told that at some point we have a 23 degree angle of elevation. So as always, these pictures are not intended to be to scale necessarily, but there we are. And there's a 23 degree angle of elevation. So notice I drew that horizontal dash line there just to um, just as a, a line of reference there for my 23 degrees. And then we step 509.2 feet back, further away. Now in, in the word problems you see in the future, you may be stepping further away or you may be stepping closer. So read the um, instructions carefully. But in this case, we're going further away. So I'll draw our figure further back. And I'll say that that length is 509.2 feet. And now our angle of elevation is less than what it was before. And when we look at the picture, that should make sense to you that as you step further back, that angle of elevation is decreasing. 16 degrees right there. So there's our setup. And we also have to figure out what do we want to find. And I should reflect that in the picture too. Um, I want to draw two quantities here. Let's draw this distance, and let's just call that d. And the actual quantity that we want to find is really this h plus the five uh, plus the five foot eyeball height, right? So I'll do that, and then the last little quantity I'll put in here. Again, this may be left out sometimes um, on on other word problems, but in this case, we decided to take, take into consideration the five feet. All right, so we really should have a, a complete picture that has all the information that um, is relevant to this problem. And now that we have that, I'm going to clear up some space here and get rid of the words. But uh, I, do, I do ask that you study that, make sure that's clear how we came up with that picture, because that's often where students have the trouble, is just coming up with this, this picture in the first place. So let me move that off to the side. I'll move this up. And let's start. So. First thing to note is that the triangles that I'm wanting to solve here, there are two of them. They're, we're going to be working with this right triangle as well as this bigger right triangle. We're going to find that later on in the course that it would be more efficient if we could work with this triangle here, but that's not a right triangle. So we're going to need to learn some more trig tricks before we can really tackle that one. So let's, uh, let's start with the first one. This triangle here, if we just use our previous trig knowledge, we should be able to, to uh, relate these two quantities, the h and the d. And can you see which uh, trig function we would use there? I hope you're thinking tangent, because this h is the opposite, and this d is the uh, adjacent. So we would write tangent of 23 degrees equals h over d. All right, let's now look at the other um, right triangle, the bigger one. And we'll write a similar equation, but this time the equation is tangent of 16 degrees equals h over d plus 509.2 feet. So. Uh, those are our two equations, and this is why, if I go back a slide or two, uh, this is why we, I re we reviewed this substitution method, because we're going to have to use that method to solve for these variables. So 
Same thinking still applies. We will take these, the system of equations and we'll solve for the one that is easiest to solve for. And I would argue that if we took this first equation, it's pretty easy to solve for, for h. Let's multiply both sides by d. I'll do that over here. d times tangent 23 degrees. h over d times d. That would get rid of the d's. And that would give us h equals d tan 23 degrees. And one thing I want to point out here is that notice that I did not immediately grab the calculator. I don't want to start typing in tangent of 23 degrees and tangent of 16 degrees. I, I find a lot of students are instinctively inclined to do that. Don't do that. Wait until the very end to use the calculator. Uh, OK, now let's substitute that in to this equation, the second equation. So the combination of these two equations I have on the board now is tangent 16 degrees equals, now instead of the h up top, I'll put d tan 23 degrees over d plus 509.2. And this is another point where a lot of students get stuck. So I'm going to uh, copy that onto a fresh screen here, and let's just finish off the algebra. So two places where students typically get stuck is in the setup, drawing an accurate picture, but also in the algebra. All right, so there's the equation where we left off. And here's where I'd say let's do sort of a cross-multiplying thing again. Let, let's multiply both sides by the denominator. And this is uh, the type of problem where you really need to clearly show all your work because it's a fairly long problem. And um, I find that on tests, a lot of times students come up with some crazy answers. And if I can't follow their work, I really can't afford, can't really give them any uh, partial credit. So clearly show your work like I am here. Make sure you understand each step thoroughly. This is how we can justify uh, um, crossing that out. And we end up with, um, and, and one thing I'm going to do, I'm going to save a little bit of time. I'm going to go ahead and distribute this tangent of 16 degrees. And I'm still not typing it into the calculator yet. D tangent 16 degrees plus 509.2 tangent 16 degrees equals d tangent at 23. Let's kind of pause for a moment and back up and think, what are we trying to do here? Well, we're trying to solve for this variable d, right? So I hope it makes sense that we would want to get all the d terms on one side and everything else on the other. So I'm going to, since here are the two d's, I'm going to subtract this term over to the left side, and then I'm going to subtract, or you know, actually, no, let me back up. I'm going to subtract this term over to the right side. I really could do it either way. I'd prefer to keep as many things positive as I can. So let's just subtract that over. D tan 16. And what that allows me to do is it now allows me to factor out the D. And this is a critical point in the problem, because notice that where in this equation we still have a D written twice, when we factor it out, It'll be written once, which means that we can have an easier time isolating it. I know I'm going a little bit quickly here, trying to keep this video from being longer than it has to be, but I expect you'll be pausing it and making sure you understand every step as needed. And our last step for solving D, notice that that is not the final thing we're doing in the problem, but luckily this is the, the bulk of it. We want to divide this whole quantity over to the left side. Now, I'm just going to write d on the left side. I'm just taking the d and putting it over here. I hope that doesn't confuse you. And then I'll take this, what used to be the right side, and I'll write it over here on the left. It's just kind of conventional to um, have the isolated variable on the left and the, its expression on the right. And that is as far as we can go without a calculator. OK, so at this point, I grab the calculator and type it all in at once. On the TI-84s, that should be especially easy to do, although on the TI-83s, you'll need to be take, take extra care to put an extra set of parentheses around that denominator. But we see that our value is about 1,060 feet.
So let me write that here and we'll recap what exactly that means. That's about 1,060 feet. If we go back to the diagram, let's just remind ourselves that we just calculated this value. Uh, remember what we ultimately wanted was the height of the pyramid, which is this h value plus the 5 feet. So here's where I'm going to take the, um, the equation that I have. I'm going to, again, take a combination of things that I've had on previous slides and put them onto one slide. Let me copy this here and go back and let me copy this. There we go. And if you can forgive the little arrows and such. We see here that now that I have my d value, all I have to do is take that same d value and multiply it times tangent of 23 degrees to get my h value. But I certainly hope you don't retype that into the calculator. That's a common thing I see students do, and it leads to various um, inaccuracies and such. Um, that was the last thing we typed into our calculator. So let's just hit times. And of course, our calculator takes that previous result and multiplies it times tangent of 23 degrees, close parentheses, and that is my h value, 449, basically 450, right? So let me write that on the board here. That's about 450 feet. And the last thing I need to do is add in the eyeball height. And our final answer is 455 feet, and that actually is how tall the Great Pyramid of Giza is. All right, so hope you took all that in. Uh, you have to know that you'll be asked a question like that on, the, on our upcoming test. So hope that all made sense and that you'll come by. If, if not, for your exercise, let me have you calculate the great brick stack of Sihai um, back behind our campus. I've looked at that tower many times and thought, hmm, I, I wonder how accurate we could get if we used uh, similar techniques using our hypsometers. So, you can probably guess I actually did go out and do that. Here's the problem in the various measurements. So try it out yourself. Pause the video and let's see how you do. OK, I'm trusting you've tried this on your own. Let me bring the answers up here. I'll first point out that the distance, the d value, as I had called it in our example, turns out to be about 277 feet. If you go ahead and multiply that times the tangent of 13 in this case, you should have gotten and then added in the 5.75 eyeball height, you should end up with the final answer of about 70 feet. And if you're wondering why didn't I do, do the usual four significant figures, the reason is because um, I would say that this uh, measurement is very sensitive to the angles. What I mean by that is if you, um, you should have this, something like this still typed into your calculator, and I ask that you hit second enter, and, and then go back and, and change this number, the 10.9, change it by just a tenth of a degree, maybe make it either 10.8 or 11, and you'll see how sensitive this answer was, that it changes by several feet. So ultimately, with this technique, it's going to be hard to get a super accurate answer, so we'll just satisfy ourselves, we'll just say that it's okay to be rounded off to the nearest foot.